Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with North Carolina jazz guitarist Daniel DiLorenzo. We talked to him in mid-April 2020 about his latest 2020 CD, How Thoughtful, released during a pandemic and navigating this new world of ours. He has a great jazz story. Get to know him. Enjoy. Man, thanks for reaching out to the show. Thanks for sending the music. I really appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you a little bit about, you know, not only your music, but what's going on in the world. Absolutely, man. Thank you for uh, for doing this. You bet. So, your latest CD, How Thoughtful, talk to me a little bit about not only this album, but having an album out during such a pandemic and such a strange time in the world. The timing, uh, it just happened to align this way. Uh, I actually had started the... Uh, the the process of releasing it before all of this stuff happened and um it just happened to line up that it, it came out right about the time that we started quarantining and um it's um i don't know in a way i feel like i've had more time to focus on promoting it and getting it to people and also just kind of um experiencing the end process of an album where you kind of leave it and start uh, thinking about the next project or or the next process you're going to get into, so um, it's been a it's been a different experience. And um, as far as the album itself, um, I just really wanted to do an acoustic album. Um, everything I've done before has been electric guitar. I'd probably consider myself more of an electric guitarist than anything else, but um, I love the acoustic instrument, and I really wanted to do a record that was just acoustic the simplest way that i could do it all performed live and um uh just kind of capture that that uh immediacy or or performance based thing let's go back to your beginnings try to talk to me a little bit about your childhood some influences and kind of how you got involved with jazz okay so i i grew up um playing rock music you know uh blues music um rock bands like Rage Against the Machine and things like that. And um, I, uh, as I got right out of high school, I started recording music. I worked in recording studios and started um, working as a recording engineer. And um, I still work as a recording engineer. And doing a lot of projects the way modern music is recorded, um, where it's more like... Um, manufacturing a record every little piece is kind of done separately and and you have this uber control over everything um i kind of just didn't feel challenged as a musician that much in that way and um i always listen to jazz i always liked jazz but i never really focused my energy on it so at that point i just i was probably 20 years old or so 22 and uh i just really wanted uh, to focus on performed music, music that all happened at once, one time, every performance would be unique, every time you played it, it was fresh, and uh, that's really how I got into jazz, and um, I, I, I would say I love all of jazz, but bebop, post-bop, um, and, you know, like that 50 era, 50s era jazz is probably what appeals to me most. Talk to me a little bit about some of the jazz musicians that have influenced you the most uh there's there's so many it's hard to consider them all in a in a question like that but you know the the great guitarist jim hall Wes montgomery charlie christian django reinhardt grant green uh you know those guys definitely influenced me a lot those records are fantastic when it came to this record i was uh it, it was a lot of people like bola sete and ba baden powell uh, that I feel like brought so much energy to an acoustic instrument. You know, when you listen to those Bolasete records, uh, there's so much intensity coming from, from a guitar. You know, it's uh, really cool. Um, and away from the instrument of guitar, um, you know, like I said, that 50s era of jazz, Coltrane, Miles Davis, Charlie Parker, uh, Sonny Rollins, all those guys. Um, I just, I, I love the that era of, it was like the perfect mixture of performance-based music, but recorded really well. Um, when you think about like Rudy Van Gelder and those recordings, Capitol Records, um, you get these really beautiful recordings of a real performance 
and to me, that's where the magic of recorded music is. What was the first live jazz show you saw that made you think, man, I'd like to do this with my life? The first live jazz show, i, I got to be honest, it was probably just a, a local you know, jazz group or something like that. It wasn't, it wasn't any big experience or anything like that. Uh, to me, it was mostly the experience as a, as a musician of like, uh, every performance mattering, uh, that, that really drew me to jazz. I don't know if it was one performance or anything like that. Talk to me a little bit about the scene down there. How, uh, how, how, how did things, well, obviously before COVID-19, what was the scene like? How do you stay busy? How's all that kind of transpired down there? Okay, yeah. So uh, the scene here, there are, uh, there are a lot of really great musicians here. That's a, a really cool thing. Um, but I think jazz itself, it's kind of like this everywhere, I feel like. it's um, it's uh, There's not a lot of money. There's, there's not a ton of gigs. There are gigs, but not a lot of them. And um, it's, not, it's not incredibly huge, but... Um, there are several venues that, you know, you get to see the best players in town, and there's some really great guys around here, um, incredible players. And um, what I would like uh, is to see more more businesses. Uh, I think there's going to be a real hunger for live music after this, and uh, maybe there's going to be more opportunity for, for people to check out jazz and and get into it a little more. So what do you like best about being a musician? Uh, what I like best is every day I wake up and it's like starting fresh on the instrument. And uh, so I don't think I'll ever be bored. I don't think I'll ever be unchallenged. And um, it's, uh, it's you know, like a really healthy thing as far as um, always having something to strive for in your life. Let me ask you this. When all of this COVID-19 kind of gets to a point where it washes away and we can get back to normal life. What revelations do you hope both musician and audience member gets from this experience when we return? That's a tough question. I think for the musicians, definitely an appreciation of playing together because one thing that I miss is is definitely that uh, experience of actually working with another human being. Um, So I think that's something that won't be taken for granted after this. Um, for an audience, I think just the appreciation of having people around that do this is, is going to be something that, that, uh, maybe we gain a little more appreciation of. And, um, I don't know, hopefully after all of this, with, with all this stuff going on, I'd really like people to learn how to treat one another better, uh, because this whole situation's revealing a lot of inadequacy and, and the way we treat one another as a society. Uh, why do you love jazz? Um, I love jazz because it's uh, it's like a reflection of the, every individual playing it. It's um, it, it's truly like uh, you're expressing your voice all the time. You don't have the time to, or it's not encouraged to over rehearse things or to always have a plan. You know, this this improvised music is kind of a reflection of the way we live. You know, we don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next, and. Um, that's okay. It's kind of uh, exciting and fun. So my final question to you is this. Actually, there's two questions. The first question is this. You know, obviously prior to right, what's been going on here for the last month or so, how healthy do you think jazz is in the world in 2020? I'm sad to say I don't think it's super healthy, but I don't think mu- musicians and music is, is super healthy in general. Um, I think it's been over-commodified. Um, and, um, unfortunately, I think because it's everywhere, because it's so easy to access music, it's so easy to hear your favorite record at a snap, it's, uh, it's in a way underappreciated. Um, I know musicians aren't really getting what they need financially from their work, and, um, I think we're struggling right now. You know, I'd like to, to have an answer for how to fix it, but I don't, um, I think, for us musicians, it's really important that we uh, just execute our craft, you know, keep doing the things you believe in and making them, and um, hopefully someone smarter than me will have a better answer for how we can take care of ourselves, but um, I don't think we're in a great state right now, but that's not a reason to stop, stop making this music and doing what we love. 
so my final question to you is this. Everyone has their perception of you, your family, your friends, fans, but you're living your life. Who do you think you are? Yeah, that's, a, that's a hard question to answer. I, I'm, I'm just... Uh... I'm just a guy that's doing what he likes doing, and um, I think it's important that we all do that. You know, do what you love, do what you believe in, and um, I think everything else will kind of come in line as long as you're doing the right things. Yeah, I agree. Hey, man, thank you again for reaching out. This is a very unique time, I think, to, to talk about the music and what's going on in the world. So thank you for taking some time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in North Carolina, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Daniel for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.